Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I was recording a earlier video uh, this morning, but I don't really know how to combine the videos. Plus, it, it, I figured that I can just make a better video all in one go here. So, uh, ETF was approved. Uh, very big news. It's some of them are supposedly trading tomorrow. Um, and what I've seen from the news articles is they say that four billion dollars is expected to come into the market. We'll see what how that affects uh, Bitcoin uh, and the price of that tomorrow. Uh, I highly expect, and we're going to talk about some things uh, about where I expect merit to go and Bitcoin, and then a longer term thesis of. Uh, talking about Fibonacci levels and Elliott wavelengths and really drawing it out and mapping out what I'm expecting this year. So, first of all, I took a trade on Tesla. Let's uh, let's just go on to the account and show you guys what I did. This is my different account. Um, this is uh, the other shares are in a different account. This is an account where I, I can just run options or whatever uh, if I want. Uh, there's only $600 USD in this. Uh, I deposited the money. I made a Tesla trade. I had made a coin trade uh, earlier. I sold out of it, took a loss, $216, as well as $188 loss on Tesla. I'll tell you why I entered it and why I exited it, um, as well as why I entered these Mara weekly, six of them, uh, and likely will be up very significantly at open, and just go through what I was thinking. So bringing up the Tesla chart, five minutes, this is what I was looking for at open today. We see the rejection off of 235, right? So if we zoom out to the daily, what we saw is it's in a downwards channel trend. However, it is at a very nice support line, 230, what is this? 231.50 is a, a very nice support line. Let me talk to you about why this is a support line. A lot of people see me draw a line and they just say, well, that's great, you drew a line. Why does this matter? How is this affecting the stock price? And why is the stock bouncing like this? So as you can see back here off earnings, there was a, a big liquidity gap, right? So we kind of see where this liquidity gap got to uh, and where the buyers and sellers uh, kind of priced this in. So why this level is important is because it shows you where the value the investors are, okay? So when a stock touches a point uh, and, and rejects off it, sort of as you see all throughout here and you're seeing it around here, is this is called a buy zone. This is a support level. And what a support level means is that who, who moves the stock is the traders. The traders are the ones who move the stock and the investors are the people who hold the stocks at levels. And, and me and you are maybe a small contribution uh, to whatever stock you might be investing in, uh, but the big money will really dictate where they want this stock to go. And why are they buying here? I, I couldn't tell you this is the valuation that they have determined that they want to buy the stock at and why these levels are so key and so important is because when it moves past this point what that means for a stock so you can see that at 231.50 there's been a very large support line it's very clear that every time it kind of tried to get on the daily chart uh, below Three, uh, 230, 150 in, in recent times it has rejected and gone through a bullish trend. And what that means is there is, when the stock gets sold to that price point, investors are willing to step in and, and buy the stock and they have no interest in, in letting it go below that. Now, what does that mean is when, if this stock is overall bearish or, uh, or whatnot and does break below 230, 150 which is a key support level there is no more buyers at that level whoever was buying that stock is no longer has enough money to hold the stock up they, they are probably buying let's say a billion dollars worth of stock at that level and this market cap of the company is 750 billion they're not buying to infinity they don't have infinite money they just happen to say any point that it comes to 23150 is a value and a buy zone and traders recognize this too and they are willing to buy off this as well right and sellers can also recognize this support zone to sell until it gets to this point now when it breaks below this point what that means is that the buyers are gone, so the sellers are the traders are able to sell the stock to a, a next level where a new set of buyers will go in. All the people who were buying there, they have bought, they're gone. 
their price point ha has been broken. So it has to reach a new level for the next set of buyers to get in. And that's why you see these quick drops and quick rises. And this is what traders look for. So what I was looking at really was at the, is at the five minute candle. Let's actually zoom out to the one hour, back to the five. What I was looking at is we saw the gap down yesterday it trended down, it got down to the support line and bounced and hovered around 235. So what I was looking for is I had a bullish sentiment on the market. I thought the, the, the market seemed bullish. So in the open, I saw the big red candle down, it came to a support line, so I bought some call options. Now it continued to trend down and I wasn't worried yet because it still hadn't reached the support line. There was a level, a layer at which I knew that a large sum of buyers should step in to save the stock. Now if it flushes at that point, you have to sell out, you're gonna take a bigger loss because the flush is gonna start being quickly. but. There's going to be an, a prolonged trend. When when this 23150 level breaks, there's going to be a prolonged downtrend because everyone who was buying there uh, has bought and they couldn't hold it up and the sellers took control and now it's going to reach the next level until the value investors come back in. And, and it, the same thing goes with a resistance zone of 235. And so I was bullish on the market it came down a lot. You could see a very nice downtrend and I expected a bounce. Now, I still do expect a bounce in the next Thursday and Friday, the next two trading days, uh, and especially to try and get back up to about 240. I really think that um, the this hourly candle mark above 235 were very bullish and that we would like to kind of close this small gap here and, and approach the whole number of 240, right? But as an options trader, if the stock is not moving, uh, how you in the direction you want it to, you are going to lose money due to time. So I needed what options traders are meant to be looking for is waiting for a break to happen and then a continuation. They don't want to preemptively get into the break and just have the stock consolidating, accumulating, basically doing nothing and losing time on their option because their option will go down. So I saw that, what I really saw is I looked at the five minute candle, I saw the bounce, it came back up to 235 and rejected once again. I saw the rejection and the break below 234 and that's when I sold out because I saw, hey look, it couldn't get above 235 so I don't wanna just be holding this stock, I don't see it coming instantly back up and that's why I got out of it. Now vice versa, let's look at Marathon Digital and let's talk about what we are talk, uh, what we saw. So we had these two very key points that I had already drew in, and we're going to draw these back in again because they're very important. Was at twenty six sixty and at twenty seven seventy five, and, and or at twenty seven seventy. And this is a very clear zone, and I want to bring this into the five minute because we saw it gap down there had every time it had kind of gap down we go to the hourly it had bounced you can see that there is a level of buyers in this $22 range that are not willing to let the stock get below it and this is very important to identify key support levels and we're going to talk about this soon in in terms of the Fibonacci and the Elliott wavelengths so in this we saw accumulation zone and push up uh, kind of like a bounce it's like the stock moved up 300%, pulled back 25%, uh, investors ac accumulated, right? So for this stock to make the next move up, it has to get above 2770. You look at the five minute candle, we saw big break, got very quickly up to the 2770 mark, moved a whole dollar point uh, within 10 minutes, and we saw rejection could not hold, came back down to support, treaded the support line, and broke the support line. We could not hold, so a bearish sentiment came back into the stock. These are just traders selling. This stock has 114 million volume. There's only 220 million shares. People are trading the stock. They identify these levels and they're willing to move them and trade off this because they see what everyone else sees is that 2770 is a sell zone. It's where investors are willing to sell the stock. And if we get by there though, all the sellers will be gone. So this is very important. Uh, if we go into the extended hours, we can see that it's 
attempted to break up, could not hold, bounced, and look at where it held the support line. These are not hard support lines to draw. They're, they're, they're very easy to identify once you get some practice, and they're very, very important. So what I wanna take you back for is the weekly, and we're gonna now look at the Marathon Digital, the Bitcoin, and the S&P 500, and I'm, I've drew, drawn these in already, and we're gonna go talk to you guys about these Fibonacci levels because this is how I'm theorizing my trades into 2024. So what I did is I take the Fibonacci from the very highest point of the bear trend and I take it to the very lowest point of the reversal from the bear trend. This is the bear trend and this is the, the accumulation back up. This is the stock going back up. So we see the stock take from lows, attempt to get back up near the first resistance line, do a slight pullback, take up and then break and attempt to break this next second line. And what I see in Bitcoin in the market is this purple line will be drawn and likely is likely to either get up to $33 and break or come back down test resistance and make its way up to the $43 mark again. These are little lines that I like to draw and it shows, and as the stock moves higher, volume market cap value will move higher. And, and the, 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 because this is a percentage gain, let's say somebody bought at 50, they're looking for a, a percentage gain. That's why the, these candlesticks seem to get longer. They look longer, right? So what I expect to happen is a bounce. I expect a break of 2770 tomorrow, a lot of money coming into Bitcoin, very bullish. We can see a lot of bottoming tails out, which means that buyers bought up the bottom. And when we can buy past the sell point, we need to hit the next level of where the next level of value investors are going to sell out of the stock. And what that seems to be is very nice at the $33 point at new highs. Uh, the highest it ever reached was in the after hours at about $33. I expect there to be resistance there. I expect us to break $31, $30 key points. But as long as that we can hold above $27.70, the stock looks very bullish and traders will also identify that. People in the stock market are all they're trying to do is make money. There's different types of people trying to make money and how they do that is how stocks will play. And, and the reason why stocks don't just instant, let's say you have a $50 stock and you think it's worth $100, that might be your price target, but that's that's not everybody else's price target, okay? So that's why liquidity gaps are very important because people didn't get a chance to sell the stock at that point. And that's why the Fibonacci levels are very important because they can identify larger trends of where more people are going to step in with more money and show points. So 2770 seems to be, if we can break that, will be our next support line, what I expected to, to kind of bounce off, but more likely, than not, we see this break above 33 and start heading towards this $44 point, right? Now there will be bounces and, and this if it gets to 43, it's likely to retrace back down to 33, but then we are looking for this next stage up, this next level up to then 52, maybe pull back to 43, and then they take its next leg up to 66. Now I'm not drawing this past 66 because these types of things, they don't go up infinitely. There will be a bull trend up and there will be a bear trend down. So that's how the staircase works. Now, there, I'm not saying I will be bearish at $66. What I'm saying is I will need to reanalyze the information that will be given to me at that point in time. So it, it, at this point in time, I, I see I'm very bullish on what I see. I, I think traders are very bullish and the valuations of companies, they're just a number. Uh, for example, you look at Apple, they only have maybe a hundred billion dollars of stock worth value of stock traded, and they're a three trillion dollar company. As companies gain and become very, very big, there's big investors who hold large, large sums of money. And if they were to dump all that money, all their shares 
onto the market, they would crash the stock because there wouldn't be enough buyers to buy up what they are selling. Now it would get to a point where people are saying, hey, look, this is stupid. This is a good value company and they'll just buy it up. But they're going to have to take a large hit if they just all of a sudden want to dump shares onto the market. And that's how these wavelengths and these Fibonacci and these Elliott waves are very important in identifying, right? So you have your A, your B, your C, your D, your E, your F, your G. And, and sure, we can go down the alphabet or whatever, but it's really the, these points of if you're in a bullish trend and you can do the exact same thing uh, as a wavelength down, uh, we just happen to be in a bull market and kind of identify where on your time frame you should be looking to sell and buy your stock. I'm looking at the weekly because I am very long on this stock. I want to trade weekly options. So identifying weekly trends is very important for me. If you're a trader you should, and you want to be in and out within the day, what I like to look at is the five minute. I would never touch the four minute because, or the one minute because you can't get a good uh, idea of where the trend is. It's just too short of a period of time. You don't have enough, enough information to work with, but it's very evident that you get over the highs this was very bullish above 2525 on the five minute. You could see the bottom and the reversal above 2425 and these pushes back up, right? So let's take this now to look at the last two that I said, Bitcoin. Let's go zoom out to the weekly, look at the very top length. Ah, what the fudge? My friggin' candle just cracked. What the hell? Dude, look at this. It just like, it like cracked or something. We're gonna keep that in the video because that was weird as hell. But anyways, let's look at this. Um, Bitcoin up here, very highest point, very lowest point. You draw the Fibonacci levels. You can see it, see the supports and resistances at the Fibonacci level. Because of this Bitcoin ETF, I'm very bullish. I expect it to get past this $48,000 mark. 50,000 is a whole number, and we would seem very bullish to get into this $57,000 range. Now, I do expect a sharp pullback back into the $48,000 range, and this will kind of resemble how Marathon Digital trades because it will trade at a multiple of Bitcoin as well because it is a Bitcoin derived stock, right? So these are the these are the kind of lengths I'm looking at. Now, why did I why did I draw a double? This is very important to note. Why did I draw a double support resistance? Because this is all-time highs, because this is a very important level, as well as I expect there to be some important economic data. What I expect is in this time range that pre leading up to the US elections, I expect there to be a, a more of a bearish sentiment the three months leading up to elections. No matter who wins the elections, I, I somewhat believe that the stock market will overall be bullish uh, after the elections, but before the elections, there's likely to lead up to be a lot of fear and pessimism because we don't know what we are going to get from the government and traders will trade off of that fear, right? So investors are going to be pessimistic. They're gonna take money out of the market and it, I expect there to be also a lot of volatility and we are going to be able to trade off this volatility as well, right? Now, if we zoom out, we scroll out, this is what I expect to reach this next layer of of $100,000 mark at the Fibonacci level, right? So I expect big up, big down, uh, a kind of a consolidation with economic news before we make this next leg higher uh, into early 2020, late 2024, early 2025 into $100,000. Now, where this pulls back from, I don't know, but and am I bullish past $100,000? Absolutely. I expect 2025 to be an even bigger year for crypto than 2024. There's a lot of maybe bad news, bad uh, uh economic data that might hold us back in pessimism, but 2025, I expect to be a bigger year for, for cryptocurrency in itself. Now, looking at the last thing that dictates our stock, Marathon Digital, is the overall market, and that is the S&P 500. We can see on the weekly, once again, from the highs down to the lows, and let's just zoom out a little bit here, we are on this last leg up towards new highs. I think $500 on the S&P 500 is a very psychological number. 
I expect us to break highs as well as the NASDAQ to break highs. The Dow Jones is already in highs. I expect tech to kind of ramp up, especially if the market expects these interest rate cuts. Uh, and I think we can get as high as $540, right? And what I expect from there is a very bearish kind of cycle. Uh, three months leading up to the elections, this is about in May, June, to kind of start seeing a topping of 540 uh, in this above $500 range and pull back down. Now, this is very important to know because this would insinuate that I am extremely, extremely bullish on the overall market. And this is very important in identifying overall trends. And this is why, even though I hate the valuations of some companies, I am not shorting right now because the S&P 500 seems to be very, very bullish. And when you break into new all-time highs, we don't know where the next set of value uh, investors are going to be selling. It's because there's no information that we have to dictate that this is a level where buyers come in, this is a level where sellers come in. We don't know that because we have never been there, right? And we're going to be able to trade off that and everything, whatnot. But it's very important to know where the big money is situated and it's very easy for traders to then trade off that. If everyone else is looking at what you're looking at, you just have to be in and be able to execute your trades faster, right? And all it is, is, is money cycles. People are taking money and they're cycling money in and they're cycling money out and somebody is losing money along the way. And the point is, is that you don't want it to be you and you wanna be able to get in and get out before these trend changes happen. But the most important part when investing is knowing your time frame, knowing how you want to enter a stock, whether it's weeklies or days or, or minutes that you want to trade and trading the levels and the percentages based on the amount of time you're giving yourself. So anyways, guys, I'm super excited. I showed you guys, we got the options. Uh, the last thing I'll just talk about is why I bought those options is I have the $20,000 that is coming to, into the account. It's going to come in. Uh, maybe I'll get the money in my account in like three to four days. Uh, maybe like, let's say into the stock account and let's give it a week time, you know, better to, to overestimate than underestimate and be like, oh, I don't have the money yet. Right. So I bought these call options because if the stock pumps up, I, I have a uh, extra option money that was, would have been used, I could have put value into the stock. And let's say the stock tanks uh, and comes down very drastically, I only lose a little bit of money from the options and now I'm putting a much larger sum of money in that I can buy at a much lower price and realistically have saved myself some money. So I already own the stock, I'm happy to own the stock, but I added a little bit of options uh, just to give myself a little bit of extra exposure while I wait for this money to come in. And I have a ton of stock I'm not concerned that if Bitcoin gets way too overbought for my liking, uh, likely won't happen because I'm very bullish on it. But if it does in that time frame and I don't want to buy it because I think it's a bad value buy, uh, I just pick a different stock. It's very simple. I, I don't. I'm not emotionally inclined to any one of these stocks. I just, I am looking to make money and I'm looking to make money how I know best, right? And that's what I hope you guys do too. So anyways, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and congratulations that the ETF got approved. This is huge.